This is Delhi. Please stand by for the next program. This is All India Radio. We now present a special feature, resurrecting the events of the Constituent Assembly session held on the intervening night of 14th and 15th of August, 1947. The feature is titled, The Night That Was. It was a warm, balmy August night, with fluffy white clouds drifting against the sky. The moon peeped out broodingly over a terrain thronging with people, ordinary people, the backbone of a movement that created a unique chapter of Indian history. The moon looked down upon the stone building where well-known men, women, leaders, guides, fighters and thinkers politicians and rulers from across the subcontinent were drawn to witness and give voice to the expectations, fears, hopes and emotions of people at the threshold of their own home. A home made possible by the transfer of power from the British Crown to the Indian Republic. The clouds stood still and the moon beamed down as the notes of Vande Mataram sung by Srimati Sucheta Kriplani wafted in the hallowed halls of the assembly house where the special constituent assembly was convened on the chosen night. Honorable Dr. Rajendra Prasad, chairperson of the assembly, clad in a simple outfit of Achkan and Churidar, addressed the distinguished assembly, an assembly which was made possible because these members had only some time ago walked down roads and lanes shoulder to shoulder with people of all walks of life. After paying a fitful tribute to the martyrs of the freedom struggle by observing a two-minute silence, Dr. Rajendra Prasad invited Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru to address the assembly and put forward before the house the significance of the event. Pandit Nehru's speech encapsulated the spirit and dignity of those intense and glorious moments in the life of a nation which defined its character at midnight and mid-month of August 1947. Pandit Nehru's richly worded Hindi speech announced the birth of the Indian nation carving its own unique destiny. Pandit Nehru delivered a speech over the mic which proudly displayed its signature name of All India Radio. किस्मत से एक बाजी लगाई थी एक इकरार किया था प्रतिज्ञा की थी अब वक्त आया कि हम उसको पूरा करें बिल्कुल पूरी तो शायद अब भी न हो लेकिन फिर भी एक बड़ी मंजिल पूरी हुई हम वहां पहुंचे मुनासिब है कैसे वक्त पहला काम हमारा यह हो कि हम एक पुरानी और एक नई प्रतिज्ञा फिर से हम करें इकरार करें आइंदा हिंदुस्तान का और हिंदुस्तान के लोगों की خدمت करने का चंद मिनट में यह असेंबली एक पूरी तौर से आजाद खुद मुख्तार असेंबली होगी द क्लाउड्स गैदर्ड लो एंड द मून लुक डाउन एज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ द ब्रिटिश एंपायर हर्ड द एंपावरिंग वर्ड्स Pandit Nehru's English version of the speech Trist with Destiny which has become a classic text of the Indian freedom struggle moved the hearts fired the imagination as the words resounded beneath the dome and amidst the stone architecture of the assembly hall long years ago we made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends, 
and when the soul of a nation long suppressed find utterance it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to the service of india and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity we end today a period of ill fortune and india discovers herself again the achievement we celebrate today is but a step and opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future the ambition of the greatest men of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye that may be beyond us but so long as there are tears and suffering so long our work will not be over the extraordinary constituent assembly had been set into motion as choudhry kalik uzama of united province supported the motion put forward by pandit jawahar lal nehru amidst rows of benches sat the stalwarts of freedom struggle sardar vallabhai patel jagjeevan ram Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad, Sucheta Kriplani, Dr. Hansa Mehta among others who had taken their seats. The floor was then taken over by Honorable Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, a humanist and an educationist, attired distinctly in his typical white peaked head cover, achkan and churidar. Dr. Radhakrishnan, to whom the country owes many a debt, walked thoughtfully to the podium to address the gathering. He read out his speech in the tone of a habitual thinker, drawing attention to the achievements and the task ahead. Mr. President, sir, it is not necessary for me to speak at any great length on this resolution, so impressively moved by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and seconded by the leader, Mr. Kalikur Zahman. History and legend will go round this day. It marks a milestone in our democracy's march. A significant date it is in the drama of the Indian people who are trying to rebuild and transform themselves. After a long night of ages, a night full of faithful fortune, and silent prayers for the dawn of freedom full of haunting specters of hunger and death our sentinels kept watch the lights were burning bright till at last the dawn is breaking and we greet it with the utmost enthusiasm this was followed by the speech of dr rajendra prasad when the amendment proposed by shri hv kamat was revoked by him i will put the resolution now to the vote of the members i will read it out first in english and i'll read out the pledge part of it in our own language and i'll ask the members then to vote for it resolved that after the last stroke of midnight all members of the constituent assembly present on the occasion do take the following pledge at this solemn moment when the people of india through suffering and sacrifice have secured freedom I, a member of the Constituent Assembly of India, do dedicate myself in all humility to the service of India and her people. In the version of the pledge is this: इस शुभ साहित्य में जब हिंद बासियों ने त्याग और तप से स्वतंत्रता हासिल कर ली है, मैं जो इस विधान परिषद का एक सदस्य हूँ, अपने को बड़ी नम्रता के साथ हिंद और हिंदवासियों की सेवा के लिए अर्पण करता हूं ताकि ये प्राचीन देश संसार में अपना उचित और गौरवपूर्ण जगह पाले हुए और संसार में शांति स्थापन करने और मानव जाति के कल्याण में अपनी पूरी शक्ति लगाकर खुशी खुशी से हाथ बता सके अमिट द फ्लट एंड दस्ट मोमेंट्स डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद an assuming and all knowing personality sort the vote on the proposal the, the members will please 
express their assent by saying I. I. I take it there is no one against it. The resolution is carried. The challenges ahead could only be met with the meaningful oaths to be taken on the proposal moved by Dr. Rajendra Prasad. In his typical somber manner, Dr. Rajendra Prasad reiterated the need to hasten the process of oath taking to time it with the midnight hour. Just as the clock strikes 12, we shall have to take the pledge. In taking the pledge, I shall read it out sentence by sentence in our own language first and I would expect those members who know that language to repeat it sentence by sentence. Then I will read it out also sentence by sentence in English and I shall expect the members to repeat this pledge sentence by sentence. The members will please stand when the pledge is taken but other visitors will remain seated. It is just about half a minute and I am expecting the clock to strike 12 before taking the next step. Now in the late night hour, the waited with bated breath for the stroke of midnight. As the clock struck the midnight hour, the air resounded with the auspicious sounds of conch shells which spread far and wide encircling the people of India in a solemn huddle. The hall also ricocheted with the slogans praising Mahatma Gandhi. Even though it was the middle of the night, yet it seemed even the babes in their mother's arms tossed restlessly to greet the new world that awaited them outside the assembly hall. A nation was born that night within the solemn columns that surrounded the assembly hall. The oath of dedicated service was administered and taken in an atmosphere rife with expectations and challenges. Turn by turn, the names that shaped the history of India gathered to mark the momentous hour. Jab Hind Basiyo ne Piyag aur Tap se Sutantrata haasil kar li hai Main Jo is Vidhan Parishat ka ek sadasya hun Apne ko Bari namrata se as the Thursday night was giving way to another day, the proceedings of the House were moving towards their charted course. The proposal to break the news of the birth of a new nation and the nomination of Lord Mountbatten to be Governor was moved by Dr. Rajendra Prasad. History was made. I propose that it should be intimated to the Viceroy that the Constituent Assembly of India has assumed power for the governance of India. And the Constituent Assembly of India has endorsed the recommendation that Lord Mountbatten be Governor General of India on the 15th August 1947. And that this message be conveyed forthwith to law by the President and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. However, could this story be complete without the voice and presence of the women of India? 
Her story was a term aptly coined to recognize the continuous contribution and support of women as and when it was thought fit to fight, protest, sit on dharna, go on fast, picket and nurse the injured. A unique and creative contribution was made visible through the presentation of the flag of the new nation. Conceived and designed as also redesigned by the collective efforts of women, especially the efforts of Pingali Venkaya, Suraya Tayabji, Sarojini Naidu among others, they wove into the fabric of India their specific aspirations. This Tiranga, the tricolor, became the tangible and visible symbol of the joy of a free spirit. The women visionaries of India looked ahead to a nation of their choice. With the approval of the house, Dr. Hansa Mehta jubilantly presented the flag on behalf of the 74 member strong committee and all the women of the country. Dr. Hansa Mehta unfurled another sheet from the polyphonic narrative of the midnight hour. Sir, in the absence of Srimati Sarojini Naidu, it is my proud privilege on behalf of women of India to present this flag to the nation through you. I have a list here of nearly a hundred prominent women of all communities who have expressed a desire to associate themselves with this ceremonial. There are hundreds and hundreds of other women who would equally like to participate in this function. It is in the fitness of things that this first flag that will fly over this august house should be a gift from the women of India. We have donned the saffron color, we have fought, suffered and sacrificed in the cause of our country's freedom. We have today attained our goal. In presenting this symbol of our freedom, we once more offer our services to the nation. We pledge ourselves to work for a great India, for building up a nation that will be a nation among nations. We pledge ourselves for a, working for a greater cause to maintain the freedom that we have achieved. We have great traditions to maintain, traditions that made India so great in the past. It is the duty of every man and woman to preserve these traditions so that India may hold her spiritual supremacy over the world. May this flag be the symbol of that great India and may it ever fly high and serve as a light in the gloom that threatens the world today. May it bring happiness to those who live under its protecting care. The remarkable special session was celebrated by Dr. Chi Luin Lo, ambassador of China through his laudatory poem penned for the occasion which was thankfully accepted by Rajendra Babu. In anticipation of the consent of the house, accepted with thanks a poem composed by His Excellency Dr. Chi Luin Lo, the Chinese ambassador. This marked an important step towards things to come, a strong subcontinent with strong diplomatic ties. The poem remains a part of the fond memories of that incomparable night. The proceedings of the special session of the house were brought to a fitting end amidst the notes and singing of Sare Jahan Se Acha and Jan Ganman by Srimati Sucheta Kriplani. Sare
The house was adjourned to be assembled later at 10 a.m. The house will now stand adjourned for a few hours till 10 o'clock. This has become an emotional recognition of the special niche that the largest democracy of the world had created for itself. The fluffy clouds sent down a drizzle as the moon dimmed itself before the resplendent dawn of a new era in the subcontinent. The long-awaited night merged into the historic dawn of what seemed a gilded Thursday, full of wonder and delight. All India Radio opened its morning session with Vande Mataram sung by Pandit Omkar Nath Thakur before the signature tune, a tradition that made its beginning on the dawn that was 15th August 1947. Vande Mataram A clear blue sky dotted with some clouds and a rainbow frolicking overhead was to be the witness to the evolution of new structures of power. The Raisina Hill Road leading to Parliament House was filled with the expectant people of India, their hearts full of hope and their eyes on the leaders. May they be blessed and have the courage to take to its fullest end the final destiny of the newly created nation. In keeping with the morning agenda of the 15th of August, the members of the House assembled to formally elect the governing head of the new country, namely the Governor-General, Prime Minister and his Council of Ministers. Lord Mountbatten in his striking, awe-inspiring uniform, along with Edwina Mountbatten, his graceful wife and their daughter, came in a ceremonial buggy to take the oath of office. I, Louis Francis Albert Victor Nicholas, Viscount Mountbatten of Burma, do swear that I will, will and truly serve His Majesty, King George VI, his heirs and successors, in the office of Governor-General of India. Assuming the power of a nascent nation, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru took the oath of the Prime Minister of India along with 15 ministers. I, 
Jawaharlal Nehru do solemnly affirm. I, Jawaharlal Nehru, do solemnly affirm that in the office of minister, that in the office of minister, I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India. To the Constitution of India, as by law established, as by law established, and that I will do right to all manner of people, and that I will do right to all manner of people, after the laws and usages of India, after the laws and usages of India, without fear or favour, without fear or favour, affection or ill will, affection or ill will. We are free was the childlike refrain doing the rounds in the homes, bazaars and fields of a new star on the world map. A star that became a strong sun to be reckoned with. The people had the rights, the mind to turn the tide their way. The world's largest democracy was thus awakened to a golden dawn after taking birth in the night that was. The Night That Was Narrated by D. Andrew and Valsa Williams The feature was scripted by Shashi Khurana with research by Ashutosh Kumar and Rakesh Bihari. Music was composed by Jitendra Singh and Dr. Santosh Nahar. The feature was conceptualized and produced by Ranjan Gupta. This was a production of All India Radio's Central Archives. A presentation of the Central English Features Unit this broadcast came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.